Eddie Brock picks up the wrestler, only known as Symbiote Smith, and gives him a good old-fashioned powerbomb that would make pro wrestling legend Kevin Nash proud. And like earlier, the commentators are still eating it up and giving those watching at home the play-by-play -play of this hardcore beatdown. Someone has to get in the ring and end this. But let's turn back the clock a bit to get us up to speed with what's happening in the brewing conflict known as the Venom War. Just earlier, somewhere underneath the streets of New York, Dylan Brock, the half-symbiote son of Eddie Brock, speaks to an unseen figure. The boy is having performance issues particularly with his current inability to bond with the Venom symbiote. He thinks there are only a couple of reasons this could be happening. One, it's either the Venom symbiote is purposefully preventing to communicate with Dylan, or Dylan thinks that he's lost his mojo. He tells the figure that something both spectacular and terrifying happened to him not too long ago. I went somewhere that was beyond death. Beyond everything. And when I was there... I saw this thing, something speaking in my father's voice. It called itself the eventuality. Well, guys, the long and short of it is that Dylan Brock met God. Well, the God of symbiotes, to be exact. And we're not talking about the King in Black, aka Null, either. The eventuality is best described as Marvel's blatant attempt to crib Elden Ring's two fingers. That is to say, it's a literal giant hand that tells the future. And since we mentioned Null, the other god of the symbiotes, well, the eventuality showed Dylan what's going to happen to his dear old papa in the future. Fight! Damn you! Take this burden from me, or the ninth cosmos will be the last cosmos, the last light staining the void. We are the anti-all now, and we are Venom. Dylan sees that his dad will basically bring the end times and the eventuality tells him that he'll know how to stop Eddie when he's older. And it's at this point that we get the big reveal. Dylan is talking to his future self, a version of Dylan Brock from the future who looks like he raided Cable's wardrobe. The two ultimately decide to work together to find a way to stop the eventuality's prophesied doomsday from happening. But, just before they could come up with a plan to do this, future Dylan senses an intruder coming. He correctly guesses that it's Bren Waters aka toxin so future dylan makes like a tree gets the hell out of there before things get dicey after that dylan goes back to his home base where his ragtag crew of symbiote rebels reside such as flexo normie osborne and sleeper and it's here that we get caught up as they watch eddie give ucwf wrestler paladin the classic walls of jericho and then the power bomb while watching all this Dylan and his kitty symbiote, pals craft a plan to attack Eddie head-on. Somewhere else, the board members of megacorporation Alchemax are having a meeting. They discuss stopping Eddie from going on a rampage and ruining wrestling events. But, more importantly, they're trying to find a way on how they can kill all the symbiotes before it bonds with everything on Earth. So, they bring in a so-called specialist named Mr. Meridius. According to him, he knows exactly what these one percenters ordered. This is Chemical K-44. I've improved on the original formula, added my own secret ingredient, as it were, to make the ultimate weapon in the battle between human and symbiote. What's in this vial? We'll win the Venom War. Meanwhile, back at Peter's apartment, the Venom symbiote pours its black goopy heart out to Peter. It tells him that it's pretty much depressed and everything it touches turns to doo-doo. Hearing this, Peter goes full camp counselor and gives the Venom symbiote a superb pep talk that would make Steve Rogers cry tears of joy. You're not some mindless monster. You're not so alien you don't know what good is. If you ever were, you've learned. So now, you're stuck with the choice. Do good things. Do bad things. Even doing nothing is a choice. And it sucks. Obviously, nobody asked for this. But the price of living is choosing how to live. Every day. Every moment we're alive. That's the only power any of us have. Now, you all know where this is going. When Peter mentions the word power, responsibility comes next. And that's exactly what he tells the Venom symbiote. It works, too, as he brings the alien goo out of its funk. But, 
Back inside the Grand Garden Arena, Eddie's symbiotic crew notices something strange. You feel that? There's a symbiote in here with us. I don't see anything. Neither do I. Because this symbiote knows camouflage. Don't you? Sleeper. At that moment, Sleeper reveals Dylan and his gang, who have been hiding within the feline symbiote's body the whole time. Eddie goes back to his evil roots. Instead of checking how his kid is doing, he presses Dylan to give him the Venom symbiote. But Dylan tells the truth and informs his dad that it's not with him anymore. Now, Eddie gets absolutely livid when he hears this. But Dylan's got his own gripes about his dad. So, the kid scolds his father how much of a deadbeat he's been and how he knows all the kind of devious crap that Eddie got himself into ever since first bonding with the Venom symbiote. Dylan and Eddie almost get into a custody battle over the Venom symbiote at this point, but guess who just entered the arena? Ladies and gentlemen, here, don't worry, guys. Venom's in good hands now. Do you guys think Spider-Man's going to stick with the symbiote suit this time around? Who do you think will win the Venom War? Let's talk about it in the comments section below. And to find out about what happens next in this story, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on all notifications to be the first to see it. See you guys soon, only here at KRTV Marvel.